Last week I posted a video using InDesign's data merge feature, although there were one or two things that I left out, so I thought it would be best to come back and revisit the concept and discuss those a couple additional items that we didn't cover in the previous video. So I'm still working with a, uh, a business card layout. Uh, I've changed it up a little bit because the primary thing we're interested in doing this week is linking to images. We showed you how easy it was last time to link to text. We'll go ahead and cover that again just to show you the process. But it would also be beneficial to say, you know what, I need to use different images. Maybe I had a brochure that was going to show different pieces of property uh, as a real estate agent. And it would be nice to be able to say, you know, here's the address information for the property and here's and here's an image and not have to recreate that file over and over and over again, but just use the data merge feature in order to populate the fields. Primary difference is, of course, we're going to need some images and then our document, our CSV file that we're going to make use of needs to include the image information as well. So that's the primary thing that's changed and that's what I'd like to show you now. The the data the document or our spreadsheet still contains information dealing with the individual but one of the primary things that was changed is the fact that we now have an additional column that contains the, the image field right here. Now this is uh, this is Excel. This is going to be a file again that we save as a CSV file but I want you to notice that the primary way that we indicate that this is an image is by making use of the at symbol. Now one of the things that you're going to run into in Excel is if you begin a field with an at symbol it assumes that what is going to be follow what is going to follow is going to be a function and so the only way actually to overcome this is to put an apostrophe as the first character in front of the at symbol you'll notice in the cell itself in cell d1 the apostrophe doesn't show up but if you look in the formula bar you'll see that there is a single quote or an apostrophe in front of the at symbol that allows us to put the at symbol in there and have Excel not assume that the information contains a function. And the at symbol is really all that's necessary for InDesign, once it's saved as a CSV file, to realize that what it contains is an image. So the word after it could be image, the word after it could be picture, the word after it could be graphic, as long as the at symbol is the first character as far as the, the field name goes for that particular column. The other thing is, is it going to be a system path or in this particular case, is it going to be a relative path? In this case, it's a relative path and it's really nothing more than the path between this CSV file and where the image exists. So in this particular case, both the CSV file and the images are contained within the same directory. So with that accomplished, with the file laid out with name, email, phone, and now an additional column that will allow us to put images in place. The primary thing that we'd end up doing was the same thing we mentioned before. Do a file to save as, choose the saving location where you would like this to go, and of course change the save as type to either a comma separated value, a CSV file, or we can also change it to a plain text file if we want to. In our case we're just going to choose CSV and it's already been saved. We have our sales rep file in here uh, that contains our images and of course if I save over that it's just going to replace it. But that will allow us to save the file in a format that InDesign is going to recognize. And now in order for us to replace the values that we see what we can do is we can go to window in the menu down to utilities. It's window in the menu down to utilities and then over to data merge. That will open up the dialog box that will allow us with its own built in instructions here to bring in the external data from our CSV file. So if I click on the menu and go to select data source. 
select my CSV file, and there are the fields that we set up earlier. So if I now say my sales rep placeholder right here is what I'd like to select, and I'm going to replace that with the name field, then you'll see when I click off of that 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 field is in now inside a double set of brackets. I can do the same thing down here for email. I've just chosen a random word. I've actually used the word placeholder to be to be the placeholder for where I want these fields to go. And I'll do the same thing for email and phone. And then there's one more placeholder that I have over here that will be for the purposes of image, for the, for the image itself. So now I'll go ahead and click on image in order to select that particular location. And if I wanted to, I could actually click preview. What preview will allow me to see is the information as well as the image. Now, part of what I want to change with the image is I want the image to actually fit appropriately. So what happens is when I choose the create merged document, I'll be presented with a dialog box. If you remember, we talked about this earlier, where I can say I'd like all of the records or a single record where I can supply a range, uh, whether I want the records to be in a single document or whether, if, whether I want those to be multiple records. Same thing can be done up here when we choose the multi multiple record layout. I can establish margins if I want to do so. Uh, that's only, by the way, if I've chosen multiple records over here before I go to the multi-record layout. Then I can choose my top, bottom, left, and right margins, whether I want it to be the first record will, will show up, or my records will show up as rows or as columns. And I can also establish the gap between columns or between rows. Uh, the other thing, though, that I was talking about is if I come over here to Options, this is where I can say when the image is placed, do I want the image to fit proportionally or do I want to preserve do I do I want it to fit the frame or do I want to preserve the frame and the image or do I want to fill the frame proportionally that's the choice that I want I want the image centered which it will be and I want to fill the entire frame proportionally so I'll choose fill fill frame proportionally and if I wanted to of course I could do a preview same basic scenario and if I move this aside you'll see now that the image does fill the entire frame. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead now and click on OK. This is actually going to create a completely separate file. Uh, one of the things that the original dialog box mentioned was uh, notifying you if, if there was going to be any overset text which there's our notification telling us that there is none and if I and then minimize the data merge dialog box or a panel. Now I can see that I have the individual files for each of the, in this case, sales representatives and a different image on each of these three individual business cards. So simple enough as far as putting an image in place, the key is adding an additional column to our data file and the header of that particular column beginning with an at symbol that's what InDesign recognizes as the option to place an image in that particular location.